Hi folks. So we're going to continue with these folding saw horses. Uh, I took the clamps off off camera, and because they're just saw horses, I'm not going to sand them. I mean, you can do whatever you like, but I'm not going to sand them. They're just saw horses. But I'm going to break the corners with a router because if I don't break the corners, they'll get knocked and splintered, and then I'll end up with splinters in my hands. Um, so it's much easier now. I'm just going to take off the corner, round it over. I'm going to use a round over bit on the trimmer and I'm going to round off all these corners. So uh, let's get into it. So I'm just going to make a test cut to make sure that there's uh, not too much or too little knife cutter. Too much, it's leaving a small step. I don't want a step. That's good for me. Those of you that aren't uh, perhaps very familiar with working with a router or a trimmer, you should be pushing the tool in the opposite direction of the rotation of the blade. If you think about the blade or the cutter or the knife or whatever you want to call it, if you think about that as like a wheel, if you let it do what it wants to do, if it's spinning around in this direction like this, it's going to pull the tool like this. Now you don't want it running out of control, so you go against the direction you've got much more control and you get to get a much cleaner cut now that's on the inside this might sound a bit complicated but going against the direction now i'm going the opposite way because if i was just thinking of this board for example i'd go up there and down there that's against the direction so now i'm going this way around the outside last little thing I didn't say about routers. I said, okay, we're going to go against the direction of the blade. But now, if you're going against the direction of the blade and the blade's cutting like this, it might, when the grain in this one's running this way, the grain in this one's running this way, as you get to this corner, it might tear off a little piece. Now, I don't care, it's a plumbing I sawhorse. But if you care, like if it's a piece of furniture and you care, and you don't want to break that little corner there. So what you do is you do a little reverse cut here and already make that corner round. 
And then when you come in this direction, there's no material for it to break off because you already cut it off. So there's less chance of damaging this corner. So now I've rounded off all the corners, everything's nice and smooth and I won't get splinters. They're not sanded, like I said before. So now it's time to start putting the hinges at the top here. We're gonna need two hinges here, and then afterwards we're gonna need three hinges for the folding mechanism. But let's just start with these hinges. We're gonna go and see where did I put them. I bought them and I've stashed them somewhere. So I'm gonna dig out those hinges, bring a screwdriver and some screws, and start screwing it all together. Okay, so maybe to for a bit of elegance, I should decide exactly where to put these hinges so they're all being the same. I could just go on that line, use like one of these as a spacer perhaps, but I kind of like the idea that I've got a screw going into the joinery too. So I guess I'll just put eyeball this line on this line if I like, without having to do any measurements. Eyeball this to here now. These are really cheap hinges. They don't even have counter sinks. They're so cheap, but I don't care. So there we go. Uh, so I'm gonna put that there. Um, and I'm gonna, yeah, or I, I could even bring a pencil. No, actually invest a little bit more effort here and I can could draw a line like that and I could say okay so this hole is going to fall on that line and these holes going to fall somewhere in the joinery now before I put screws in this I think like this is just a scrap piece lying around but you see it's split already and um, if I bang three screws one next to the other here on the edge I'm probably going to split this it's soft wood so uh, it would split hard wood as well it's got nothing to do with it just too much metal stuffed in that between all those fibers it's going to split it like an axe or something so I'm going to drill a little pilot hole these are four millimeter diameter screws this is a two and a half mil bit so Here we go. Now I'm just going to put two screws in each hinge, like this. And see, I didn't make some mistake that I wasn't um, particularly aware of before I fill the whole thing with holes. Oh, and if you see, I put a straight edge here, just to make it all in the same line. It's also not that critical. How many times would I say, it's only a sawhorse? Okay, now this is a bit far away from me, so I'm gonna come around the other side of the table, and I apologize if my bald head is in the frame. It's incredibly hot here today. The temperature's going up. It's uh, where is it? May. We're out of lockdown. Like I've said before, we're back to work. You can hear the traffic on the road, and the temperature is going up. I don't like it. I'm not a native. That screw's been used before, and it doesn't have a very good head. So I'm gonna. Toss that in the bin and take a new one. Um, I'm not a native of a hot climate, although I'm here most of my life. More, more time here than a cold climate. I don't like this hot weather. I'll just wait for the summer to pass. So the moment, it's hot and dry. Um, it's called, call it uh, Hamsin or Sharav or something like that. All right, look at that. Well, I don't know if you can see that. I probably need to give you a better camera angle. So 
So that's pretty satisfactory. There's only two screws in there at the moment. I'm going to put in some more screws. I'm going to open it to 60 centimeters, which is what we had on our template at the very beginning, 30 centimeters each side of the central line. I'm going to open it to 60 centimeters and then measure what's the gap between the two stretches, the two lower stretches, so that I can cut the material for the opening and closing mechanism. Okay, so I'm going to get a meter and measure it. A tape measure, even. Okay, 60. So now I need to know what's the distance between here and here, which you perhaps can't see so well. Pull the camera around afterwards. Here I've got 41. 40 and a half. So hopefully I have a few off cuts from before. these I will get enough pieces and then there's going to be another hinge 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 like this but I've got to cut it not exactly in the middle but 20 20 like this and then put on those uh, hinges so I'm going to nip over to the table saw and cut it table saw where did I leave my glasses you all probably think I've got amnesia or something, don't you? Or Alzheimer's or... What's that? <laughs> Here they are. Please tell me if you have this problem as well. I'm always looking for my, my accessories. Stylish, fashionable carpentry accessories. 20. Will do. Centimeters. Okay. Just make sure the blade is up enough. Oh, I, oh, I had a class this morning. One of my strong students oh, locked the blade at that height. I was obviously quite worried that it might go under that height. He was cutting joinery. He did a very nice job, actually. I'll just remind him not to tighten the saw so much next time. Okay. So we should always, if you're on the table saw, guys, straighten up an edge. Don't take it for granted that it's straight. Because I'm using this European style saw, I have nothing backing up the blade and over the cut. So I just put a bit of scrap wood behind it. I actually have enough material here for the other saw horse, like I made a pair. Uh, but I'm not going to cut it, I'm just going to check that my, uh, my calculations were correct and I'm going to uh, put a couple of screws, a couple of hinges, see it all works and if it does, my measurement remains here so I can come back to that. Okay, my glasses are here, here. Tell me, don't let me forget. So this will all go here, and there'll be hinges. You saw it's a little bit shorter. Well, maybe you saw it. It was supposed to be 40 and a half. And I said, well, there'll be a little bit of space where I put the hinges, and 
I'm cutting 40 and a half in half. It's like 20.25. And I don't want to get all tangled up with half a millimeter, so I just cut 20 centimeters. So how's this going to go? Uh, this one is going to be able to fold up and down like this. The same on the other side. And then between the pair of them, they need to be able to do this. So there's going to be another hinge over there. So they can all fold up like that. So I'm going to put this hinge in first. So there we are. We're getting a bit blinded by this. It's all twinkly and shiny, but that's my two options. Or oh, I can just fold it over the edge like this and put in the screws. Or I can look at that, that gap there and there. Or over that side, you've got three. Here, here, and here. Okay, so uh, I'm just going to butt it up like this. I just wanted to know, show you that about hinges a little bit. Okay, and these are cheap old bent um, sheet steel, or <laughs> what the heck it's called, just bent. A good quality hinge is extruded out of one piece, but I'm rambling. Okay, let's get the hinges in there already. And I'm going to drill because I'm right on the edge. And I don't want to split it. Now I'm using those gaps that I was talking about just to get things lined up. Oh, look, that takes off the, the glint from the fluorescent lighting like that you see so now I've used those two gaps there so that I can see that I'm straight you see gosh I hope you all understand what I'm talking about I'm not explaining this very well but those those things that are winking at us hi so I'm using those to see that my material straight I could also lie a straight edge along here like that like that and keep it straight and then just maybe pinch a little bit like that half half let me know in the comments below does david ramble too much should he get to the point do you prefer my old four minute videos or is there a place hmm that doesn't close very well. These aren't countersunk. It won't close up all the way. Which is a bit of a nuisance. So I think I'm going to go over to my drill press and just this hinge, I'm going to countersink it a little bit with a slightly bigger metal work bit. I don't think I've got a countersink for metal. So these heads of these screws sink in. Because look at that. Why, why do they make stuff like this? Okay, they're cheap hinges and everything. But look. Very frustrating. If that was a door or something on a cupboard, it would never close. Because the screws would hit each other. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> this is fun. There you go, see that one? 
Things like that. <laughs> that one. <laughs> it's like that. Why am I laughing? Because I'm looking through the viewfinder and my fingers, I've got a clue what's going on. So yeah, so I put a stop on the depth of the drill press and I'm going to just do the rest of them like that. Okay, back to the workpiece with our newly countersunk holes. Now I'm expecting a visitor very shortly. So if I disappear in the middle of this and reappear with different weather and different camera angles wearing a different shirt and longer hair you'll know why because i'm expecting a visitor now and then it's it's the weekend so after that visit i'm gonna go and do some of oh look hang on let's zoom you guys out now it closes you see the difference for a couple of little counter sinks, the thing works. So I'm gonna drill the rest of the holes and whack in the screws. Using my little straight edge there instead of looking at all these gaps and stuff that I waffled on about before. Here we go. If anyone's got one of those fancy center finding drill bit things, use it. I'd love one, but I never saw one around here. My kids would say, well, why don't you order one off eBay? I don't know, another generation, I don't know. That's, once I find it and then I say, oh, that one looks better, that one looks, oh, that one's cheaper. Oh, that one's got shipping. And then I get all muddled up and confused which one and I just give up. I need to walk in a store, pick it up, look at it, touch it, say, no, I don't want it. Oh, yes, I do. And that's the end of it. Ha-ha! <laughs> oh, a little bit crooked, so we'll just straighten that up, shall we? There we are, like I said, these hinges aren't the best. My visitor arrived. All right, guys, so I'm going to say bye for now, and I'll connect the rest of those hinges on next time. Bye! Okay, so now this piece is complete and closing. I'm in the same T-shirt, it's the same day. My wonderful guest has left and now this piece needs to go here like this so you're gonna have to connect a hinge here and here and the same on the other side and that's what's going to allow it to fold up so that's what I'm going to do now so first of all I'm just going to screw on two hinges here and here okay so now the closing problem that I had with this before, and then I countersunk these hinges. Um, I have the same problem here. It doesn't close properly, look. It's springy. You see, that's because the, the screw heads are binding. And if I don't do anything about that, like they're pushing on one another, it's going to cause problems down the line, and the screws, the, screws, the hinges are going to get bent, and it's going to be... Uh, a bit of a mess. So, unfortunately, I'm going to take it all apart and go and countersink all of the hinges. Now I understand that's what I need to do, except for these two, because these two will never have that problem as far as I see. Let's have a look, and that's folded up there like that. Yeah, they don't cause a problem. They hit each other down here. Mm. Shame for cheap hinges. Okay, guys, well, you don't have to watch this bit. <laughs> I'm gonna go and countersink all my hinges. Okay, so all the screws are back in. I measured the middle over here, and I just placed the hinge on it like this, and drilled a hole. And now, I pull this guy over, and drop a screw in there. A screwdriver. All 
right. Hey, hey, hey. Okay. So now I want to show you something really cool about these guys. Watch this. All about doors. And now the really cool thing that I want to show you is this. You can fold it up with one hand and you can put it down with one hand. So if you've got a pair of them, which we will have soon, you can just take them where you want to go and drop them like that without having to fiddle about with anything. And you can bring your door or your wood and chuck it on the top and this thing should be pretty strong, I think. Yeah. Cool. Now I need to assemble the other one. All right. Okay. So they're finished. Of course, you could sand them, you could paint them, you could put on them uh, linseed oil or, or anything like that. I'm not going to. They stay in the workshop most of the time. If they're outdoors, they're under a cover. They shouldn't be lying around in the rain, of course, if they're not protected. Um, that old pair I had have been hanging around for years without any finish on them, except for paint that got splashed here and there. So there you go. I hope that helped you. I hope you build yourselves a pair of these and then you can have a nice work table with an old door or you know, you can carry them around job sites if you're working, you can stash them in your garage, you can stash them in your house. I think they're really, really useful saw horses. I hope you like them, I hope you make a pair. Let me know what you think down in the comments. And uh, thanks ever so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share with your friends, ring that bell, and I will see you guys in the next video. Take care, love you lots, bye.